Hi Pacemaker family, just wanted to get on here and touch base with you on how I'm feeling is a week since I had my pacemaker put in. I went to my one week checkup with my primary care today. Everything looks good. She removed the bandage from the surgery. Just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like. I have bad reaction to tape from um, medical tape. So that's what that is. So not everybody has that. I do. I'm kind of glad to have that off now, but I wanted to kind of show you, see how it kind of puffs up. You can see the pacemaker in there, but the scar is healing nicely. Um, my doctor wanted to put a uh, band-aid on to try to kind of help alleviate some of the pull down from the extra skin that I have from my bariatric surgery. When you have surgery, you have a lot of ex excess skin. So just kind of lift things up from there. Um, so that's kind of, because you put this part on first, kind of lift up and put the tape up here. Just kind of keep that skin together as it's healing. But everything looks good. Um, I haven't had any kind of bad problems or anything um, since the surgery. My baseline is 60. It's pretty much staying there. I don't think I've had any kind of heart racing yet. I think the highest my heart rate actually went was like 120 and it felt like it was racing then. <laughs> not gonna lie. My heart's not used to doing that. So, but it wasn't like crazy. Um, but I think that's the only thing that I've really had as far as like what's going on there. I had the Abbott dual chamber pacemaker put in. Um, the day next day they came in and made sure everything was set up and working correctly. They said I was pacing at 80 and 44%. The bottom chamber, um, I can definitely feel when that kicks in, it kind of feels like a little thump, 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 like kind of like someone like tapping from the inside out <laughs> um, when that kicks in. Now they did have a little problem putting that bottom chamber in. Uh, they had three different areas that they tried. The third one finally worked. So that is that. But all in all, um, I'm just, I haven't went back to work yet. I'm slated to go back tomorrow. My primary care said if you can't get through the day, then contact me and I'll make sure that, you know, we get you a doctor's note. And she said it's basically something you have to kind of ease back into. Um... It's kind of like, you know, I mean, I made dinner the other night and it, that wore me out. Not going to lie. I was kind of worn out from that. But that's because I've been resting. What you're supposed to do. You are supposed to rest. Make sure you rest. Um, my family's been helping me a lot. Ice has been a great thing, but I don't use regular ice. Just as a little tidbit. So I went on Amazon and they have those the ice packs where you unscrew the top and you put the ice in and the water in and you know, but I didn't do that. I used rice and Epsom salt. I used about a cup of ice, cup and a half, a uh, cup and a half of rice and about two or three tablespoons of Epsom salt. I put it in there. The Epsom salt is to keep the rice colder longer. And it does. You can set it on there and it's pliable. So it's going to like, you put regular ice, like an ice pack on, and it's just going to kind of sit there until it gets warm and then go down. A rice pack is going to be pliable and it's going to sit on all the little crevices that you need it to sit in. So it is the best. Just my suggestion. It worked great. So um, the one I got has a little strap that you can put the pack in and kind of strap it on you. So if you have to be up or whatever that can be on you. Um, one thing I did notice that sitting up, um, as a woman, it just kind of pulls down more, you know, that weight of it. So I just kind of lean back and just kind of let it sit. So that's just the things that I've noticed. Um, I do have a sling. Uh, don't wear the sling all the time. You definitely want to be moving that arm. Um, just kind of do little shoulder rolls every now and then, kind of reach forward a little bit, um, reach out a little bit, 
that's it. You don't want to move it too, too much. Um, I tend to do a lot of things with my left hand. I never realized. So my doctor said, absolutely. You can be unconsciously reaching for things, reaching up for things that you're not supposed to. So this one, yes, reach up all you want. That one, no. So um, don't pick anything up heavy. Um, I think I, I think it's like no nothing more than five pounds. Um, and I don't. I make sure I do not. Um, but the, the the rice packs, great. Um, I sleep at an incline right now, laying down just feels a little heavy still. So I just at an incline as I'm on the uh, reclinable sofa. So I'm on that, but my family really has, has stepped up and they're helping me out. They make sure I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to do. They don't like to leave me alone because I have a tendency of, Oh, I'm feeling a little better. Let me go try to do this. And I'm not supposed to do that. So I've been like that since I was little. I don't think that'll ever change, but that's why they don't like to leave me alone because I will probably try to do something I'm not supposed to do, but I've been pretty good. Um, so I just want to touch base with you all, let you know how I was feeling, let, let you know how I'm healing. Um, I, you know, I do feel a little pain in my shoulder here. My primary care explained like, when they're doing the surgery, they kind of have you stretched. So my back shoulder, like my shoulder blade is sore and right here is sore. And that's because of the position they have to have you in to make sure your skin is taut, um, to get everything in there the right way. So she said that's to be expected. If I feel anything worse than that, then I'll contact my cardiologist and let them know. But that's about it. Um, so sometimes I think I feel it kicking in. Sometimes I don't. But the bottom chamber, I definitely feel when that kicks in because it doesn't, it's not working all the time. It's only working at a 44% rate right now. So when it does kick in, I definitely feel it. The top one, not too much. Um, I wear a Fitbit. I don't know if any of you wear that. I also got my bracelet. Um, definitely get one of these. I got mine on Amazon. Um, and I have my name and I have pacemaker on there. I also have, um, because I'm a gastric bypass patient and I'm diabetic, all that's on there. You have your emergency contact information. Um, you have their phone number on there. So if anything were to happen to you, should you pass out or anything like that, it could be a lifesaver. So we definitely invest in one of these and they have it to where you can get different ones on Amazon. Um, this one is a purple one. You can get red, you can get green, you can, whatever color you want. Um, it's stainless steel. They do have some other ones on Amazon that you can get that are just like, um, you can get them like to put on your Apple or Fitbit band. Um, you can get those too if you don't like wearing bracelets, but you do like wearing your Fitbit. Um, just trying to think of a couple things. Um, make sure before you go for surgery, which this is something I didn't do and I should have, and I know now, is make sure if you're getting a home transmitter that you make room for that in your room someplace. I never thought about it. It has to be within six feet of where you go to sleep at and facing towards you. So I have a dresser across from my bed, which is not far from my bed. I have it on the edge there, turn facing me. So make sure you make room for that before you go for surgery. That way you're not scrambling when you come home. You're like, oh, where am I gonna put this? Make sure you make, make room for that. Um, and it, they're very great. They come in, they set it up. There's really nothing you have to do but plug it in. Um, at least that was for me. I've heard some people say they had to wait for it to be sent to them and they had to set it up, which I'm sure it comes with perfect instructions. There's a help line right on the front of the transmitter that you can call to, if you have any problems setting it up. I'm having it. I literally came home, found a place for it. Well, my husband did. Found a place for it, plugged it in. It's ready to go. 
I just wish they had some, and this is for my own, like, peace of mind. I like to be well in tune with my health. Um, I wish there was an app or something that we could kind of go on to see what's being transmitted. Um, I know that they have people that kind of monitor it. But it's not like a live monitoring. So they, you know, if they see something out of the ordinary, I'm sure it shows kind of a red flag or whatever. And, but I would just like to know, you know, what, how I'm doing, you know. So I wish there was a, a, a type of app or something that, that we could get whatever is transmitting, just so we can see it. I mean, it is our body. It is what's going on with us. So that's my only downfall, I guess you could say. I, I'd like to see it. But other than that, everything's been going great. Definitely listen to the doctors. Um, sometimes the instructions you're given when you're released from the hospital is kind of confusing. Like I had three different things about driving. I had three different things about going back to work. It was kind of confusing. I was like, which, which one do I listen to? Because all of these are from the hospital, from the doctor. Which one do I listen to? Listen to your body. Okay. If you don't feel like you're ready to drive, don't drive. Don't feel like you're ready to go back to work. Let the hospital know, like, hey, this is the type of job I do. How long should I be out of work? So they had me out for a week, tentatively. So I was to see my primary care, which I did today. She knows what I do for a living. So that's why she was like, see how tomorrow goes. If it doesn't go well and you're in too much pain, then you might have to kind of ease back into your job, which work a couple hours a day, come home and rest. It might be what I have to do. I don't know yet. I'm also very hard headed. So I tend, you know, as long as I have my pain meds in me, which you don't have to get like a super heavy medication. I literally am using... Tylenol arthritis, which is because it's a higher dose of Tylenol, it's 650 milligrams. That's all I've been using. Um, now, every once in a while, the pain does get a little much because I probably did a little too much. So I up it. But do not go over the recommended milligrams per day. <clears throat> Now, the hospital gave me, um, they said, don't go over 4,000 milligrams in a 24-hour span. Do not. It can do damage. Don't want to damage anything else. You're on your road to recovery to living a better life. Do not want to damage any other organ at this point. So, do what the recommended is. Um, but, you know, stay on top of it. I know when my medication is wearing off, I start feeling a lot more pain. Um, so I try to manage that and make sure that, you know, I get my medication when I'm supposed to get it um, and don't overdo it. So these are just some things that I've been through so far. I'm, I'll be posting other things of, of how I'm feeling in two weeks or whatever, but this is one week out. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I, I can't remember if I said it earlier, but, um, right after my surgery, like I, my body felt more energized. Um, I just, it just felt like my body was getting the oxygen. It was finally needing so it was kind of, it was like, I actually feel, I mean, I'm in pain. Don't get me wrong, but the rest of my body, it just felt better. And I hope everyone else gets that too, because it is the best feeling. Uh, one of the things that I have noticed is I don't get dizzy when I stand up, literally just standing up before I had this. 
I would stand up and have to s wait a second before I could even move forward because I would get so dizzy. As of right now, I have not experienced not one time of being dizzy. Not once. Bending over and standing up. Not one time of being dizzy. It's kind of crazy, but it, it's great. It's absolutely great. Um, one of the things that has kind of stuck in my head is I talked to the, the representative from Abbott and I was like, what are the things I'm not going to be able to do? You know, am I going to be able to go to an amusement park and get on a roller coaster? I lost a lot of weight. That's one of the things I've been looking forward to. I went to one amusement park last summer and I'm like, man, now, you know, thinking I'm going to pacemaker. I'm not going to be able to do anything. She said, live your best life. This is going to allow you to live your best life. I can't tell you how relieved I felt when she said that. I almost started crying when she told me that because that's exactly what I'm going to do. I mean, I haven't been able to exercise. I haven't been able to do anything because of my heart rate and how I felt. And this, and this is only my first week. I feel so much better. And I can't wait till this is done healing so I can do other things. So I'm going to do exactly what she said. I'm going to live my best life. I mean, I'm still my young <laughs> but that's what I'm going to do and I hope everyone does it regardless of your age if you get a pacemaker it is giving you another lease on life live it live it so until next time pacemaker family Mwah! love ya